uh, making live rock. That's what this demonstration is going to be about. Uh, why make live rock? What saves money and protects the reefs. So be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, how do you make live rock? It's one part Portland cement to two part aggregate sand, oyster shell, whatever else you want to use. One and a half part large rock salt. And uh, not water softener, uh, but you can use water softener, but it comes large. Usually it's more square, so it gives you kind of a, a square look to it. So you kind of want to hit it with a hammer to make it more, uh, not look so square, so it'll look a little nicer. And uh, the ice cream salt will work, but it's also smaller. So usually you can go to the store and just buy uh, the, the, it comes in a blue bag, and uh, for seven or eight dollars you get 40, 60 pounds. And you found it at a feed store? I found it at a feed store. So all this comes from the feed store. Uh, this year I paid a dollar a pound for each of it. But if you buy it in bulk, it's a lot cheaper. So uh, this is oyster shell, and it's a medium. Uh, this is oyster shell, shell, but they call it pullet, and it's a pellet, called pellet. And then this is just the rock salt, and then I got the Portland cement. Uh, there's a lot of people that kind of are concerned if you go to websites, they'll say, oh, you have to have a number three Portland. Portland cement is in different areas called different numbers. And that just represents how quick it'll dry for your area. And uh, so here, you probably won't find a number three. But any Portland cement is what you want. So don't get concerned with numbers, because a lot of people on the website say, it has to have a number three, it has to have a number two. Uh, it's just in your area, they have different Portland cements, and that's just for curing time. So uh, I like to use the oyster shells, and the reason is uh, it's composed of calcium, strontium, magnesium. You know, it provides a degree of essential trace elements as it's breaking down. So it's really good to use. So if anyone wants to make, uh, instead of buying base rock, it'd be a lot better for you to make your own rock. And uh, I make it to where it's really dense and I have a bunch of little holes in it. And so if you add a little more water to it, it makes the concrete weaker. But it also, it'll make it form more like a rock. And uh, it also depends on how you form it. So I will make some up at the end to show you how I do it. Because I just kind of uh, granularly drop it. And that's how I get it to build up more, to give it more of a texture. So actually if you tore, put a cup of water over this, it would pretty much saturate the cup of water instead of just overflowing over the top of it. So you can tell that the rock's real porous. Uh, you can add, you can be more creative. Uh, some people actually say that you can use cereal. So you can use Fruit Loops, you can use um, elbow macaroni to give you any kind of degree and then it'll decompose. Uh, but to me, that's not good because anything decomposing like that can also cause you nitrate problems. So, you know, I never use play sand. If you go to Home Depot or something like that, they sell play sand. Most of all the play sand has silica in it. And usually the directions will say that it has silica. So you're better off if you're going to do the sand uh, to go to the reef store and buy aggregate sand. And uh, whether you want to buy the sugar, this is a little bit larger sand and uh, called Special Reef Mix, so it's larger crystals. But this one I made with sand, these two are made with pullet, and then this one's made with the oyster shell, which is still called pullet, uh, because pullet is chicken feed. But this is the one with the pellet, and then this is the one with just crushed oyster shell. Uh, the pullet would be good if you want to use the white concrete. Like I said, you can buy white concrete, but you have to go to a concrete store to buy it. You can't buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's and it's about twice the price. So $10, say, for an 80-pound bag at Home Depot, it'd be $20 at Hughes, you know, concrete or some concrete place. Yeah, Cut the ranker or whatever. Ranker or wherever yeah. you want to go. Yeah, it's going to turn coral in eventually anyway, so why bother? Yeah, and also, if you wanted to go to Home Depot, you can get a, a light color tent. They sell the dyes for concrete, and you can actually buy the beige color and make more of a Fiji-looking type of rock by buying the white concrete and then putting the dye in it, it'll create more of a, instead of a white look, it'll create the sand texture kind of look to it. So it's just, the more creative you get, the better your product will be. And over time of making a couple, you'll get more creative. Um, as you can see, I made one. This one, I, as you build up the concrete, I put salt in it to build a cave. So basically I put down a layer of concrete, 
and then I will take some of the rock salt and just pile it up in the center and then just put the concrete over top of it. And then later, when the uh, salt dissolves, it'll leave a nice cave. But you can build as big a cave as you want it. Or I could put two of these together and actually just glue one of the rocks to the top. Not glue it, but just take some more Portland cement, build around it, and then it would be dry, then you'd be picking up the whole thing as one. And uh, a lot of people on the internet also, they'll uh, get a, a box similar to this, some kind of container, they'll fill it full of reef sand, and then they'll tell you to wet the reef sand a little bit and dig out a tunnel, kind of the shape of rock that you want. And then you can pour your concrete in there. The only problem that you have with that, this the sand sticks to the concrete. I guess you could take some kind of a brush and brush that sand off, but I just didn't really care for that look. So these I put in this pan, and then later, right now, the bottoms are flat. And if I wanted, I just flip the rock over, wet it with a uh, mister bottle to where the concrete's moist, and then put concrete right over the top of it and texture the bottom too. So it's you know really versatile, however how you want to do it. Uh, you can take a big rock, hit it with a hammer, make it into all a bunch of little rocks. Uh, the little rocks here used to be one big rock. I dropped it on the driveway. I made a bunch of little rocks out of it. So you don't have to use a hammer. Yeah. So that's creative. But uh, like I said, you know, some people talk about using cereal and stuff. But to me, something decomposing inside the rock wouldn't be good because it seems like that you're going to have nitrate problems if something's decomposing on the inside. So to me, I would stick with the salt, and uh, it works, works really well. And actually, if you got the ice cream salt, the smallest salt, and then you got some medium salt, and then you went down and actually bought some of the water softer salt, they come in big cubes, and you crush some of them up, you'd really have more of a diverse look into your rock. You could really make some good rock. Um, we just went cheap, and I bought a pound, you know, a couple of pounds, I think five pounds of each is what I bought. And uh, just to make a demonstration and all, and I've already made at least this much rock, and I still have quite a bit left over. So it's really cheap to make rock. You can make a lot of rock for very little money. Uh, Lowe's, Home Depot does not sell a 40 pound bag of Portland, but Lowe's does. So a 40 pound bag of Portland cement is about 650. And uh, so then all you need is the salt and uh, whichever pullet you want to put in it. Or if you just want to put the sand down, you know. Uh, the sand gives you a good look. It just kind of depends on what kind of rock you like. Whatever how you want to do it, just put in whatever you want. Uh, you can use straight Portland. You don't even need to put anything else in it. Put the rock salt in it, and it'll give you uh, craters and holes and stuff. But the rock salt really gives you the look that I, that I like. Instead of it just looking like a stone, it actually looks in. Plus, uh, if you get a stone, it's not going to be as much critters. This would be twice as much critters because there's a bunch of holes and all, all through it. So there's a lot, lot more living matter that would be on this than actually on one that's just a solid stone. So to me, this is the best rock that you can really make because it's a lot of area for the critters to be live on. So, and that's what you want, especially if you're not going to have a lot of rock. This would be the preferred method because it's going to hold a lot more and it'd be a lot better for your aquarium if you're limited to your rock. More surface. More surface and stuff. Because every time you pile rock on top of one another, you lose that. Well, with this, you'd still have some going in through it and all because the craters that are that are in it and all. So it's just it's, it's a good way to make it. You just have to be creative when you're doing it. Um, a lot of people have problems where they've had concrete sitting. It's like, i got a bag of concrete. It's been in the garage for a long time. You got to make it and it doesn't set up. That's because your concrete's old. The concrete will saturate if you don't wrap it back up in a bag, keep something over top of it. I usually take like one of my old sandbags and when I open the concrete, I keep throwing the bag over top of it so it doesn't saturate. Uh, especially if you have it in your room where your aquarium is, there's a lot of moisture there. You're going to find your, rock, your concrete's getting hard chunks in it or the concrete just gets old and it will not cure. It's like I keep making rock, but it falls apart. And that's because your concrete's old and, and it's no good anymore. So, uh, but like I said, people are really concerned with the types of concrete. Don't worry about Portland concrete. That's a misnomer, you know? What do you want, Bonnie? How old is old concrete? Well, I've had some six months and it's okay, but a couple years, you yeah. probably push it. You'll know. Away. When it turns into a big block, <coughs> 
And it was well, done. I be well, the rock. I'm just not, not just a. Sometimes it'll turn it. into a rock, and you know that's bad. You can't use it. But actually, it'll still be good <laughs> because you, yeah. But the concrete's just no good. It won't set up. And when you go to pick it up, the rock just falls apart. Now, uh, when I make a rock, I usually let it set for at least two days, not doing anything with it, not messing with it at all, because you don't want to hurry the drying method up. If you put a fan, and I keep it out of the sun, and uh, let it take time, because the longer it takes to cure, the harder the rock will be. And over a period of time, concrete gets harder as it sets too. So, in the first couple of days, if you really fiddle with it, you could break it apart probably, because the inside of it still... Yeah. If you set it outside, it'll end up cracking part yeah. anyway in the sun. Right, right. So I usually do mine and set it somewhere in the house or something like that and give it some time or on the porch out of the direct sunlight so it doesn't cure fast. And, uh, but I think it's, well, doesn't really matter how long. Uh, I take two days to let it cure. Then I'll put it in the water for a couple of days or at least a day after that and then that will take care of the salt. But then I usually take something and peck at it, because where the salt was, it's a crater now, there's a hole there. Sometimes you can't see it. So if you take something and peck on the rock a little bit, you'll start finding there's a cave here, or there's some holes, and you it, the rock will look a little better. Um, this rock has not been really messed with. I made it and just, some of it actually has a little bit of salt still left in it. And I did that just to where y'all could see what it looked like. This one has salt inside, so I, I took some of it out to where you could see how I made the cave, and I left some of it in so you can see the rock salt inside. And uh, when I go to make one, I'll put a couple little rock salt, because you can also put a little spot on it, and just put some rock salt right there on one corner, and then build up a little concrete around it, and then leave a little bit to where you can see the rock salt, and then you'll see that you've got craters inside and stuff, so it just makes for a neater looking rock having that diverse type of look and all. I really like the caves, so, though. You know, I always tend to build a cave of some sort. Uh, they're pretty easy. It doesn't take no really? more concrete. It just takes the salt. Where they all started at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, if you want it and you have someone that can give you oyster shells and you want to sit out with a hammer and bust them all up in little bitty pieces, ever how you can find it. But the feed stores uh, will have it. But he said that a tractor supply store around here probably has it. Towards us, there's a lot of feed stores, but you have to call them because some of them don't have the pullet because the pullet is a man-made where they take the oysters and they put it into the pellet. They're making the pellet out of it. And all of it's chicken feed. Pullet is for chickens. And uh, it's just chicken feed. It helps their digestive system digest everything. Be so. careful. I went to r and Pet down there on Wickham, or on uh, Minton, and picked up a bag of what he told me was the pullet, oh. and it turned out to be granite. Right. I gave it away this morning to a guy that had chickens down by Northern Village. But if you're not careful too, there can be some organic matter and stuff in there. You just want to say 100%. You know, and that's what you're looking at for for anything in our aquarium stuff. We're always looking for 100%. That way it stays natural, and we know there's nothing else inside that they put in it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that way you stay out of it. But the silica, I just want to make sure that people realize, if it's got silica in it, there was the old method to where you can fill up a glass of water with some vinegar, put your reef sand in it. If something floats to the top, that's silica. So you can't use it. There used to be uh, sand that you could get from Home Depot that you could use, but anymore everything has silica in it. So I don't know of any company that you can buy the sand from, because Home Depot used to sell play sand so much cheaper. You can buy it for four dollars a bag instead of twenty dollars a bag. You know, it is a little more expensive us buying it from the reef store. <laughs> I think Dick's got it by the box. Yeah. But got forty pound boxes, twenty two ninety five from them. But it's it's definitely worth buying the better sand because if it has silica in it, your tank's gonna stay and have diatom on it all the time. Does everyone know what the diatom is? Oh yeah. You know, that's where your front of your tank just turns brown. And you just cannot keep it from turning brown. It's a new tank syndrome. Yes. This is pre-washed, pure, ready-made sand sugar. Right, good. And that's a good price, too. Oh, yeah. uh, but diatom will just drive you crazy, and if it has silica in it, you'll never get rid of that. And same way with your frag plugs. If you use the silica in it, it you're just going to have problems in your tank, and that's what makes a lot of people get out of this hobby, is because having diatom problems, having algae problems, it just drives you crazy, and finally you're like, I'm tired of it. It's just not pretty. 
and having a brown looking tank is not pretty. And, uh, but diatom is something that every tank goes through, but if you put the silica in this, you're never going to get rid of it because it's inside the rock. So it can just cause you problems from then on not knowing. But to me, the base rock, I don't really care for it because you're not sure what you're getting. A lot of people will just get rock and call it base rock. It's base rock. Base rock really no good at all, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the worst rock. And that's why they sell it for $1.50 a pound or $2 a pound. And uh, so you're a lot better off making something like this for a little to no money, uh, $12 or so, you can make a lot of rock. So if you get someone to go in on a bag and some salt, you could make both of you a lot of rock. And after this uh, gets made, then you really want to seed it. And the best way to seed it once the rock's all done is uh, just with, like if you have a purple up rock, scrape a little bit of the, uh, uh, out and that's called seed, you know, or using purple up. So like when you make it and you want to stick it in your tank and uh, just go ahead and seed it, it will get purple up a lot quicker. And uh, if you bought one rock that had it, you just scrape the purple and leave it in the aquarium, let it float in the aquarium, and it'll all, you know, it's a, it's a form of, you know, just seeding the tank and everything will coralline algae a lot faster than normally doing it. Same way purple up, that's what purple up is. Uh, but I want to talk about curing your rock. That's where a lot of people are like, well, how do you cure rock? Curing rock is the simplest thing. Uh, all you do is put it in a bucket, and it has a lot of lime. Concrete has a lot of lime in it. So that's what you're getting rid of. Lime makes your pH go up. So if you made this rock, if you made one little one or something, put it in a tank, it wouldn't be any problem. But if I put all this in there, it's going to kill the tank because the pH is going to spike. So all you do is put it in a bucket once a week, change the water, 100% just regular tap water. It doesn't have to be anything special. Oh, yeah. It's not salt water, so you're not buying salt and making salt water and then throwing it away or anything. Just tap, just water. tap water. That's okay. it. And you're going to check your pH. So you're best with pH strips. And uh, it takes about six weeks to get rid of it. And all it is is uh, the more rock you put in a bucket, say we made 55 gallons of it and we put it all in one bucket. It's going to take a lot longer than if you had two or three buckets to distribute that because it's built up a lot quicker. And you uh, so, put all that in the back of the toilet, right? Yeah, and that's <laughs> back of the toilet because that's what a lot of people do when you make frag plugs. Put them in a stocking, you put them in the back of the toilet. Every time the toilet flushes, it's getting water change. So a lot of people make their frag plugs and put them in the back of the toilet, and it's a natural, <laughs> it's always getting water change. always upsets the tiny bowl, man. Yeah. And it's it's uh, more energy efficient because you use Actually, less water. Actually, you know, smaller rocks would work, and it saves you money on your flush. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, volume. Yeah, but uh, so you really want to limit yourself. You know, it's better to get some five-gallon buckets, put a few pieces in, and not cram pack it full because when a rock sits on top of another rock, then that's what take, makes it take longer. So if you actually watch how you stack it, it'll actually take less time. Uh, you can put vinegar in it, which will drop the pH. But really, just doing a water change, if you put it, you know, somewhere, just took the water hose to it every now and then, overflow it. What about just continuously running? It's really not going to speed it up because it's a slow press process of the line coming out of the concrete. Right. But you put it in the pool. Uh, well, yeah, it's got chlorine and everything, so mm -hmm. probably not good to put it in the pool. Just because then you're dealing with another, got to get rid of the chlorine. That, that well, there's some city water type water? Uh, yeah, but it's very limited, you know. I mean, it's tiny uh, bit. Not yeah. as strong as a pool. Right. So, and how often do you, do you put them in the buckets like that? How often do you Twice do you a week that? is more than good enough, you know. Uh, some people say every couple of days they'll do it, but twice a week. And uh, if it rains a lot, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> Should you have circulation? I'm sorry? Should you have circulation in it? No. You don't need any circulation. You can. It'll help improve it, but you don't need any circulation in it at all. Uh, and all you want to do is take a test strip every now and then, test it. If it's still up way high, what I mean by that, 12, 14, the pH. Uh, once it gets down 8 or 9, then it's ready for your aquarium. You know, but wait and make sure, don't, don't empty the water out, put water in it, and test it. <laughs> Let it have a day or two of sitting in there but back in fresh water, and then test it. And if it's not spiking anymore, then it's done. 
And that's yeah. something you probably yeah. don't want to set your bucket out where any leaves or anything are blowing in it and yeah. stuff because that's going to jack up your test. Yeah. Uh, but from that point, you can set it in the garage and use it in a year. So you don't have to use it right away. It's done cured. So a lot of times when you get a uh, frag plug that says cured, well, they're not wet, they're dry. So all they did was get all the uh, impurities out of it, the line, and once that's out of it, then it's good. You can use it right away, or you can put it in the garage and let it dry, and use it later on. You're done with the curing process at that point, though. Then all you need to do is seed it. And like I said, the seeding, the purple up, wherever how you want to do it, if you have a couple rocks with purple, you just scrape the rock, let it go around in the aquarium, and it will purple up in no time, a lot quicker than letting it do it on its own. Some people actually will cut up shavings of plastic because the plastic will grab the coral line quicker. I don't want plastic on my rock though. So. But they'll do shavings of straws and cut it up and then that plastic will grab the coral line easier and, and do the same thing. But to me it's like I've got time. You know, In this industry we all learn, be patient. Nothing happens quick in this except disaster. <laughs> so just be patient when it comes down to doing the rock and you'll have good success. The more you mess with it, the easier it becomes because you learn a technique on how to make it and all. And uh, that's about it, you know. Uh, that's on how to make it. Now I'm going to go through and show you how to make it the way I do it. And then from there you can do your own little being creative and making it yourself. And uh, like I said, there's people that use spaghetti noodles or anything. Uh, the oyster shell to me works the best. The sand's not bad. It actually looks pretty good. Uh, but now say, well, I want to build a rock to where I can use my frag plugs with it. Instead of having to drill it before it dries, you just take your frag plugs and stick in the concrete. And then before it totally dries and they're locked in, pull them out. And then later you can switch them in and out for any frag that you have. So you can really be creative at that point. But these rocks, as porous as they are, you can always come in here with an acro, put a little glue on it, stick it down in there, and it's going to stick a lot better than if the rock was a solid mound of rock. Uh, but <coughs> the directions are easy. Like I said, it's one part Portland to two part aggregate to one and a half part rock salt. That can vary. If you want something to where you want to make sure it's a little stronger, when I'm making this rock, after a couple of days, you'll grab the rocks and some little ends will fall off and that's just because it, you know, they're barely hanging on or that's on a piece of the salt and it's going to fall off. So you'll always have that little crumbs that are going to come off of it. Uh, so that's the first thing I do is kind of usually take the crumbs off and uh, after they soak, you know, you peck on the rock a little bit just to find the little hollow spots. And that's where the salt was. And most of the time when you're making the rock, you know where you mounted some of it up if you want them little craters. And you can break it away a little bit in those areas to open it up more. And uh, if you don't like the way the crater turned out, or if some of it broke away, moist it with a little water, put some more concrete on top of it, patch it up, and away you go again. So these were all flat on the bottom, but if I wanted to texture the bottom, I do the same thing. Just mist them, flip them over, and texture the other side. Uh, that way, some people like a flat rock, and the flat rock right now is kind of ugly because it was made on the bottom of a container, so it's completely flat. But if I just took a little bit, flipped it over, took a little bit, and just spackled it, then it would be pretty flat, but it would have that texture to where it would look good, and it would give you a nice platform to stick some uh, corals on top of. Couldn't you put uh, like some a layer of oyster <coughs> shell on the bottom of the pan first, and then start doing your work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, they like the sand because you can mound it up, but like I said, then the sand sticks to it and you have that look. And I just never have taken a wire brush and tried brushing all that off. A little bit too much work to me. It's, it's easier just to do it like this if you're patient with it. And like I said, you can mound these up and, and uh, I can take all these rocks and make one as I'm, as I'm doing my aquarium. It has nothing in it. I could actually build the whole aquarium and put a little Portland on it, lock it in, and start building my aquarium, and then fill it up with water. It would never shift or never move or anything, and it would always remain, you know, standard. You could build it all the way until it's done, and start filling. I like it now. Yeah. Done. Yeah. 
And a lot of, some people actually do the back of the aquarium. You, you don't like the back of the aquarium the way it looks? You can do it all in Portland cement. Uh, some of them take a wire net and put it on the back, and then just take the Portland cement and push it up on top of the wire netting. And uh, then the whole back of it will be Portland cement and basically the same texture. So, but any questions or anything? And I'm going to start making it. That way everyone can see how. And if anyone wants to come up and take a look at it while I'm doing it, what? I was going to say, oh. What? Sorry, yeah. We're going to get closer so that the camera catches what you're doing. Okay. okay. To make the live rock, we're going to take one cup. I've already pre-done the concrete, so I know this is one cup. And I'm just calling this a cup. It's maybe a little over eight ounces. It may be a little under. But for these purposes, it's a cup. A portion. And this is one portion, this one here. So if you're doing one cup, this is about the size rock you're going to get. So if you want something bigger and mix it up something larger, or you want to make several, then use a five gallon bucket and use three cups or whatever you think, you know, what size you want. Uh, the most important thing is salt goes in after it's all mixed, after the water's been put into it. You don't want to put the salt in right away because it starts to dissolve and it'll actually kind of ruin the concrete and the setting up on it won't be as good. So um, let's make the pullet, the pellet size. So I have one cup of Portland concrete and I'm going to put two cups. I'm going to make the other one just a little bit light. About three quarters of a cup. So I'm doing one three quarter cup. Pull it to one cup of concrete. I got my water here somewhere. Now a lot of times the concrete, I go ahead and mix it up before I put my water in it. By mixing it up, it'll save you a little bit of time of just trying to mix it all up because if the concrete's at the bottom, it'll want to stick around the corners and stuff. You have to kind of scoop it around. So as you can see, it's already kind of has the uh, concrete type texture to it. You almost can't really see the bullet, the white anymore. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is, don't put too much water in it. The more water you add, the weaker the concrete will be. Uh, you could almost do a ratio the same as the pullet. You'll find about one and a half to one and three quarters. This is probably a little bit wetter than I normally do it, so I was wrong on my ratio. One cup is about all you need, probably a little bit less than one cup. But when I'm pulling it out, I like to just sprinkle it down. And by dropping it, that's how you get more of the clump look. One mistake, I didn't put the salt in, so. One and a half, I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to mix the salt in, but it's 
after everything's mixed up, you put the salt in just before you start putting it in the You can see it kind of already has a texture to it. Like I said, I just find that I, instead of dropping big clumps, I kind of let it just fall out of my hand and it already gives you the texture with the little holes and stuff all in it. Now does the, the uh, salt that gets in there encased all the way, it just stays in it forever? Uh, no, it, it dissolves. It all dissolve? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll all dissolve out of it. Do you want to make a nice little pocket with some? And you want to make a, a cave or something? I just make an opening in the front. And let the salt trickle out of the front. And as big as you want the cave, you just add more. And you just don't cover the front of the salt. That way you can the cave will have an opening. process in two days this rock will be ready to take out and like I said that mixture gives you this size rock and if you look you can see the salt coming out of the front of it and that's it in two days I'm gonna leave this with you Steve and you can bring my bucket at some point okay and uh, then you can uh, do whatever you want. So in two days, this is ready. And then all it needs to do is be soaked. So at that point, you just let it set for two days. Yeah. You don't put it in the sun or anything. Yeah. And then... Because if, if I put this out in the sun, it would probably get real brittle and just fall apart. After it's set up for a couple of days, and then you can start cycling it, at that point is when the salt starts to break down yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So after two days, it's pretty hard, and if it still has, if it's indoors and it's cool out, it's going to take longer to dry. So if your house is 80 degrees or so, or 78, <laughs> but humidity, if yeah. you're, yeah, if you like it 72 degrees in your house, and you put this in your house, give it an extra day to dry. Uh, it won't dehumidify it faster yeah, than days No, because as long as you're not underneath uh, a vent, yeah, then okay. you're okay. You know, because if, you, if, I, if I did it right here, it would probably dehumidify it more because I'm right by the return air. Okay. So just in your house, regular, it's, it would. Garage is fine. Yeah. Yeah, garage is fine. I don't think But that sometimes, like, a shed wouldn't be good because it's going to be too warm in the shed, and it's going to make the concrete set up quicker. And like I say, the longer it takes, even if you took a mister, let it dry today, then tomorrow took a water mister and gave it a couple little mists, not much, but just a little, then that gives it more curing time. That makes it over time the rock's going to be super hard rock. And that's the secret, just making sure that it's good, dense, I mean, just hard rock. 